So this is a really good argument point that us Christians can use whenever we talk about the authority and the accuracy of our scriptures and how it's been passed down correctly for thousands of years in, in the Old Testament to the New. So archaeology lines up with the scripture countless times. And that's important because it shows that the transmission of the text is correct. Because you have a non-biblical source generally, which is an archaeologist, digging up and it matches the tenacity of the scripture that we have. I made multiple videos about this in my archaeology in the Bible series, and I'm going to continue with this one here today. And this video is going to be called The House of Peter, The Home of Jesus in Capernaum. Now this is pretty cool y'all, so we do know what Matthew 8, 14 that Jesus did actually enter Peter's house. It says, now when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying down, sick with a fever. And then he goes on to do a miracle because you know, he's God and all. And we do also know that much of the adult life of Jesus, he did reside in that small fishing village called Capernaum as well, which is off the Sea of Galilee. In Mark 1 21 that's where he began some of his early ministries in the town synagogue and where he also recruited his disciples so there's a lot of important beginnings that happened in this small little town off the Sea of Galilee so around 25 30 years ago Italian excavators were actually working in Capernaum and they may have actually recovered the remains of this small home that Peter actually lived in where Jesus walked in. This is really cool. And what's cool about it is that it was found buried underneath a Byzantine martyrdom church. And that's going to be important because we're going to talk about that here in a second. Now what you're looking at here is the pictures of the house and it is from the middle of the first century. This was buried underneath that Byzantine martyrdom church. And the reason why they built a church over it is because they wanted to keep the area sacred in other words where this house that once stood obviously through time and erosion it started to fall apart so they built a new church on top of it to help keep the um, sacredness of its historical relevance to Christianity they wanted to build that church on its old spot so that's one massive clue of this house was extremely important in the middle of the first century and also when they uncovered the house underneath the Byzantine church, they found that the house was just an ordinary plain house, but it, it began to change dramatically in its appearance and its functionality. What the house originally was for was obviously for living, but then it started to change in its function. So one article says that the house's main room was completely plastered over from floor to ceiling, a rarity for the house of the day. And the houses of pottery was originally, you know, cooking pots and bowls. Now consists entirely of large storage jars and oil lamps. So it's that's a massive sign that it's a, now a, a communal gathering spot. And we do know that it was a Christian gathering spot. In carving on the walls, in Greek, in Hebrew, it said, "The Lord Jesus Christ help thy servant," or "Christ have mercy." It was written in Greek, Syriac, and Hebrew. And then there was also etchings of small crosses and a boat. And right now it's being disputed, but there's mentioning of Peter, to believe to have mentioning is of Peter. But the scholars are arguing about that right now. And going back to that living room that I mentioned a second ago, it had been converted to a central hall for like a rudimentary church. And the room's old stone walls were covered by a newly two built story arc and the room was replastered and painted over the floor on geometric designs of various colors this article say so it's obviously changing a transition of this house to a church so obviously we don't have bones and you know a birth certificate that says this is peter's house but this is massive evidence of at least an early middle of the first century Christian church in a small town where Jesus did go and he did live a lot of his adult life. 
And worst case scenario, it's one of the earliest churches that we've ever found, if not the earliest. And this, of course, with that strong language that they're using about Christ, calling him Lord, capital L, or Christ have mercy. This is all high Christology sayings. So this is even more evidence that the early Christians believe, that the Orthodox Christians believe, which is what we believe today, the deity of Christ, and that he was crucified on a cross. This is just more evidence. It's an embarrassment of riches, the amount of evidence that we have about the Orthodox Christian belief and how original Christians worship Christ and how they believe he is Lord and how he was crucified on a cross and he resurrected. This is just more and more evidence that correlates with the scripture of the Bible that we read today. You can read on a book or an app on your phone. Now, I do believe that this is the house that Peter lived in. I don't think that, you know, Capernaum was this massive metropolitan city where you're going to have all these Christian churches popping up. Okay, this is a fishing village, first of all, and it's from the middle of the first century, and it's got this high Christology stuff carved in on it, and it's believed to have Peter's name written on it, and it turned into a church, and the historical um, treatment of this spot of land turned into another church, meaning they wanted to keep this, this spot sacred because of what occurred there, or maybe who lived there. I think it's very good evidence of what we have here is the house of Peter. I'm sure more evidence and more information will be determined upon this spot, but I just wanted to share this with you. Thank you for listening. God bless you in Jesus' name.